afternoon. I hope everyone had a nice weekend. Happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, I do want to talk about a bird, but first I uh, just have to mention a, a thing in the news that I thought was sort of uh, astounding that um, you may have heard that someone who works on uh, naval reactors for the U.S. Navy uh, got the bright idea. Now I'm going to take a bunch of restricted documents. I'm just going to mail them to some other government, being like, hey, I can give you your secrets, um, maybe, maybe asking for money, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but what happened is, what often happens is this government just turned this over to the U.S. government, being like, hey, this, this guy is doing this weird thing. And so someone from the FBI then got in touch with uh, Mr. Naval Reactors and over several months convinced him to share more secrets, at which point they arrested him. Um, it was really just something out of a, a Coen Brothers movie. It was kind of fabulous. The bird for today is uh, uh, a fearsome uh, hawk called a, a goshawk. Uh, very uh, aggressive predators. And a lot of birds, if you come into their territory, especially if it's near a nest, will like make some noise, fly around. Um, but some birds will actually like try and like fly down and, and attack or harass intruders. I've been, uh, I've had swallows fly at my head down by the, the track at one point. Um, but goshawks are a little scarier. Um, they will just uh, screech loudly, dive bomb right at your head. Uh, and you really don't want to, to tangle with these things because they have quite the, the fearsome claws. So, uh, uh, best stay stay out of their way. Uh, the hawk on my shirt today is not a goshawk. It's a uh, uh, somewhat nicer or at least at least less aggressive species, a, a red-tailed hawk. So so here's a, a picture of one of those, though it's probably a juvenile. It doesn't yet have the, the reddish color on its tail. All right. What questions do you have about uh, loops, lists, files, the lab, anything like that? Yeah. Um, so on, I don't know, are we allowed to ask like quiz questions as if like they're clarifying questions? Uh, yes, if you're, if it's a question about what the function is supposed to do or, or what's expected. Right. Um, in the is bridge one, um, it's having us do it in all of the inner lists of lists of lists of lists of lists. Um, will there always be, are we to assume there would always be two lists, or would there theoretically be more? Um, do you mean two layers of lists, or like specifically two inner lists? Two inner lists. No, there can be any number of inner lists. Your task is to check that they are all the same length or not. Thank you. Other questions? All right, so let's start out with some practice. Yeah. I would like you to take a look at this code. Uh, it does some, some strings, some indexing, looping, concatenation, a lot of stuff we've been talking about. Uh, and think about uh, what will be printed as a result. All right, maybe umtaotsu, mm, that's good soup, it's mm, go up. Maybe even an error, please discuss with your, your neighbors what's it's gonna be printed at. All right, we have uh, converged on the correct output here. Heard a, a number of folks discussing how our range function starts at one. And the character at index 1 in our string s, which, which character is that? H. Yeah, it's this h. First character is index 0. And then we're counting by 2. So h, t, s, g, o, space, o, p. And then there's not 2 after that, so we, we stop. Uh, any, any questions on this example? All right, let's do another. Here we have a function. 
uh, a loop, some some assigning to to things in a list. So think about what this will print out. All right, we're mostly thinking A, but maybe one of these others. Uh, discuss with your neighbor how you are are thinking about about what this will print out. All right, for I think the first time. I have I have surprised the majority with what is going to happen. Uh, someone who, who thought it was going to print out none, can you uh, say why why you thought that, John? It just doesn't return anything. So. Yes, when our when a function has no return, that means it's going to return the value none, because we don't have a return statement. Python says, well, that's not allowed. You have to return something. So it's going to put in a return none uh, at, at the end. So if I had done print vec, print our list, after calling the zero function, then that would print out the contents of the list, zero, 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 which when you correctly identify is, is what our function is doing to the list. But when we print zero of vec, that's going to print whatever that function call returns, which in this case has no return statement. So we would, uh, we would put none. This is an example of one of the uncommon, but, but you do see them cases where we have a function that doesn't really have a thing to return. Like it takes in a list, it modifies the list, could return that list or return nothing. Both seem reasonable designs to me. Uh, and so functions that uh, make some change to a list or, or other mutable structure may, may not return, return anything. Uh, something that comes up in the lab you're working on with gerrymandering is we want to sort a list. And so might have something that looks like this. If we have some things on a list called results and we say dot sort, that is going to modify our list results to put it in order from smallest to largest, in ascending order. But importantly, this it changes results, but it doesn't return a new list because it's changing results. It's not creating a new sorted version of results. It's reordering the things in our existing list. And so it doesn't return anything. So if what we don't want to say is results equals results.sort, because that's going to sort our list and then change our results variable to be none. And so we'll just lose, lose the list. So we, we just want to say results.sort by itself. It's going to change the list. And then now, we, now our list is sorted. Just like in this zero function we just looked at, we call zero on vec, changes vec to all zeros. Now that change has been made. There's no return value from that function we need to use. Questions on, on this or this idea of, of functions changing lists? All right, one more. Have another function uh, that's doing doing something with uh, with lists or or sequences, and wondering what is going to be printed out. Uh, we are we are not a consensus, so please make your best case to your neighbors for why your answer is, is the one. Looks pretty much the same as the first time. So uh, what is V1? What kind of thing is that? 
list. It's a list. What kind of thing is V2? So tuple. What do we know about tuples? We can't change a thing in a tuple once we make it. It's eternally that way. So we will actually get an error on line four. When we try and change a thing in V2 in wise, we're going to get type error. Tuple does not support item assignment. <laughs> So this was my, my devious trick to refresh our memory that tuples are different from lists in this, in this one key way. If they were both, if we made v2 a list instead of, instead of a tuple, we could change it. Uh, suggestions on, on what's going to get printed? Adam? I see the one to be Exactly. We'd switch the first thing in V1 and V2, and then we'd print out V2 uh, there. As far as the switching part goes, I have two versions of uh, switching two variables. Same principle as switching two things within uh, a, a list. X equals 5, Y equals 10. I have the version where I say X equals Y, Y equals X. And then a version where I use another variable temp in the same way that I'm, I'm doing up here. So this first one here, is this going to swap my values of x and y? Seeing some, some shaking heads. Why? What will this do instead? Why won't this work? Is that right? Because in line we were defining x as y. So basically the same y as y. Yes, exactly. In this line, we lose the value of x. We replace it with the value of y. And so when we use x here, we just changed it. So both of x and y will end up being 10 instead of them being switched. And so we need... to use something that's usually called a temporary variable. That's why I call it temp here. It's a variable that's simply keeping track of something for a short, for a little while while we will need to use it later. So temp basically saves our value of x as 5. Then we change x to 10. But in this case, we haven't lost x because we still have temp as a label for it. So then we can use that to update y and switch the values of, of x and y. Questions, questions about this? Anything not clear? Marcus. So if, if it was a list, if v2 was a list, would it still work even if you don't have a return? Good question. If we make v2 a list and we can uh, do line 4 here and assign y is 0 to t, uh, this swap first, this again doesn't have a return, it's going to return none. But notice that on line 7, we're not using the return value for anything. We're calling this function, we're giving it the lists, and when inside the function, when we start doing things to the stuff inside the list, that is going to change our original lists. So we'll have the effect of switching these first two elements and changing changing both lists. And this, the reason it does that is by that aliasing idea that we talked about on, on Friday, where we call swap first with v1 and v2. And I have our picture of the world is that v1 is an arrow to 1, 2, 3, and v2 in the uh, hypothetical where we make that a list is an arrow to a, b, c, and then when we call swap first, we go into that code, and the parameter xs is assigned to v1. It's like we did xs equals v1, and that makes xs 
have the same arrow as B1X S becomes an alias for this same list and YS an alias for our list of, of strings. And so then things we do with X, S, and YS will affect our original lists. Does that make sense? Yeah. Other questions? <clears throat> All right, so let's get to some new stuff. And for this new stuff, I want to return to uh, uh, an example from the past, our, get, our number guessing game, where we got a random secret number, and then we were having uh, the player enter a guess, and each time after they enter a guess, we give them a hint using is, if, elif, else, uh, determining how close they got to our secret number. And when we were first talking about for loops, and we wanted to change this game to give the player multiple guesses, we used a for loop like this, where uh, the guesses were 5, 4, 3, 2, uh, and 1. But this is sort of, uh, it's, it's a little awkward. Um, one, because uh, we kind of have to write out specifically kind of the, the sequence of guesses we want. Uh, we want someone to, the, the player to get, rather than, than say just keeping track of a single number that is a single variable that is the guesses that they have, they have left. Um, someone also brought up at the time, well, what if we wanted to give them 100 guesses? Do we have to write out this whole list from... Uh, 100 all the way down to, to 1, that, that seems like a pain. And so uh, what we really want to express in Python is the idea of We really want to repeat this code while they have guesses left. And this is a kind of logical idea that our for loop is ill suited for because our for loop is what we would call a definite loop. When we start a for loop, we have a sequence. There's a defined number of times we're going to iterate over this loop, once for everything in that sequence. And if we have to, ahead of time, define how many times the loop is going to iterate, that makes it very difficult to express a logical idea. It's like we want to iterate while some condition is true. So. We indeed have something called a while loop. And it is an indefinite loop, not meaning that it continues forever necessarily, but that we don't define at the start of the loop precisely how many times we're going to iterate. In our for loop, we have a sequence, we're just going to keep going through things in that sequence. For a while loop, we're going to have a condition that tells us true or false is uh, should we continue doing this loop. So a nice, uh, so, so this is going to let us say something like uh, guess is left is 5. And then while guess is left greater than zero. So while they have guesses left, keep on keep on looping. So there's actually another nice way that we can use a while loop as part of this guessing game. And uh, a kind of more, I think, more compelling 
case for using a while loop than than turning our our our, uh, our loop for the number of guesses. Uh, and to show you what I mean, if I play the game and it asks me for a guess, and I say ha ha ha, the game breaks <laughs> because it tries to convert uh, in this case ha sa ha into a number. Can't do that. It breaks. And what I would like my game to do is to not put up with this. Just force the player, say like, no, that doesn't, that's not a guess, give me an actual number. And just keep doing that until the user comes to their senses and types in a number. So I might have something like a get guess function where I want to say, while the user has not entered a number. So as long as they haven't entered a number, I'm going to ask them for another guess inside this while loop. And so every time I get to the top of my while loop, it checks is the condition that I've given it true or false? If it's true, we continue through the loop, we do the loop again. If it's false, we skip past the loop. So let me fill in this example. I'll take my guess from here. So I enter a guess and turn it to an integer and then return it from my get guess function. But inside here, I'm going to say while, and then I'm going to give the conditions where I want to ask for another guess. So what's the suggestion for, for something that would not be, not be a valid guess that would cause me to ask for another one? Here. Anything that's a string? <laughs> Yeah, any, anything that isn't a number. So I can use, there's a string method called isDecimal, which returns true if it's, all, um, if it's all numbers, if a string is all numbers. And so I would want to say while it's not something that's all numbers. And then to ask for another guess, I just call the input function again to get another guess. And now I just have to use this function inside my loop over the number of guesses. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to ask me for a guess. Ha ha ha. Doesn't let me do that. Can try again. No, it's still looping. How about one, two, three, A? That's not a number. Uh, spaces, no. Blank, no. All right, fine, I have to actually put in a guess. And this is, this is the power of a, of a while loop, something that we just could not do with a for loop, where now we have a loop that's going to repeat just as many times as it takes for that condition to become false. So we get the guess, and then we call isDecimal, which will be false for any string that isn't all numbers. And then we say not, which just flips false to true, true to false. So as long as isDecimal is false, not isDecimal will be true. It's true, we go into the loop, we get another guess. Uh -huh. We're at the end of the loop, we go back to the top and check this condition again with the new guess, is decimal, uh, and just keep repeating that until not is decimal is false, meaning that it is all numbers, then we skip the loop and continue on our way. What are your questions about this?
All right, there's one thing that I should probably do, uh, which is check whether this game is actually is actually working. So I know the number is 12. If I say 10, it says I'm close, but here's something weird. It says I still have five guesses left. Well, it's definitely not keeping track of how many times I've, I've guessed. It lets me, it always says I have five guesses left. Any, anyone's, uh, why, why don't you talk to your neighbors about why, why we're seeing this? Why is it all, why might it always be saying we have five guesses left? All right, any, any suggestions for, for why this, uh, this loop might be broken? Adam? Uh, well, it's not necessarily broken, but it just isn't reducing the amount of guests that you actually have. It does nothing about the. Exactly. This is a way we might have to change our thinking a bit as if we are working with while loops instead of for loops. Because we're used to for loops, the for loop is, is taking care of like the loop variable gets assigned to the next thing in the sequence. We don't have to write the code for that. When it comes to a while loop, all it's checking is something is true or false. It's not. It's not changing guesses left uh, uh, by itself. And so what we have here is an infinite loop. Right. This this loop is just. It will continue for all of eternity. Like guesses left will never change. Guesses left greater than zero will always be true. So we just need to. Subtract one from the guesses left uh, after each time, each time that they guess. And now we can see I can guess five times and then, then the game's over. Questions on this? Mm -hmm. Can you also do the minus equals um, at the top of line 31, I guess it's that? Minus equal one? Uh, so you mean uh, like this? Yes. So is this line that I just added uh, inside or outside of my of my while loop? Yeah, and since it's outside, it's going to happen once rather than every time we go through the loop. Uh, and so we want to subtract one from the guesses left every time through the loop because every time through the loop is the, the player getting one guess. Can you also replace line 38? Yeah, so we could absolutely replace line 38 with guesses left minus equal one. Uh, these two lines, guesses equals guesses left minus one, and guesses left minus equal one, are exactly the same. They're, they're, the second is just a, a shortcut for the first one. Is, it, is that was what you were asking? Yeah. Other questions? All right, let's do a bit of while loop practice. So here we got a while loop uh, where we have a, an exciting countdown, and uh, this is asking how many lines, like how many lines of text are going to be printed out when we run this program. <coughs> so it's not printing out five, six, or four. That would be the, or none of the above. Those would be the number of separate lines that get printed out. All right. Let's uh, discuss with our neighbors how you're uh, how are you thinking about uh, this this while loop. All right, I did not trick you this time. Uh, it will not be four lines, five lines, or six lines. Um, we can uh, see for ourselves. Create a launch.py. 
x equals 5 while x greater than 0. Ignition in x minus 1. Print blast off. Go ahead and run this. And uh, yes, it is. It has taken over my terminal, printing ignition in four uh, uh, many, many, many times. Uh, the uh, way to stop a program like this that's just uh, running forever uh, is to hit uh, Control C in the terminal, and that is a keyboard interrupt. We'll stop a program. Could also make this a little bigger. Over here on the right, on this Python, I could click the garbage can to get rid of the terminal. That would also end the program. So why why did I, I print out why did it print out ignition in, in four for all eternity? Max? Exactly. That if I wanted to change the value of x, I need something of the form x equals something new. So, for example, x equals x minus 1. Now x will actually go down by 1 each time around the loop. Questions about this? All right, I have a code, a uh, bit of code writing, writing practice for you. So let's say we have total equals zero. For i in range 10, total plus equals i. and then print total. I would like you to, on your own or working with your neighbors, to translate this code into code that uses a while loop and does exactly the same thing. So I want a code, code that does not use a for loop and instead uses a while loop and does all the same, uh, does all the steps that this does and will print out the same thing uh, at the end. So. Uh, Go ahead and, and get to work on turning this into its while loop version. All right, let's talk about how we can uh, assemble our, our equivalent, uh, equivalent while loop. So uh, my first question, can someone, um, uh, I, I know that we still want total, uh, is there another variable uh, someone use? Yeah, Cole. Well, in the for loop, you have an i for fixed character count, so you need something to serve the same purpose. So I just made a variable called count. I also set it equal to zero. Yeah, so we, we have this variable i that is used in our for loop, we're going to need to, to have some variable to, uh, to play that same role in our while loop version. Uh, someone else want to share what condition you used uh, for your while loop? Adam? Uh, while count is lesser or equal to 10. While count less than or equal to 10. So that will be true when count is, is zero. So we'll go go into our, our loop the uh, the first time. Uh, someone else want to share uh, what's a line of, of Python you put inside your while loop? Maybe. Um, plus equals one. We add one to the count. Uh, how did you know? You needed to do that. 
Because if I didn't put anything, it would never increase. Yeah, if, if count is, is playing the same role as our variable i here, in our for loop, i is 0, and then 1, and then 2, and then 3. So we need to make sure that the, the same uh, variable in, in our while loop also 0, then 1, then 2, then 3. So adding 1 to it each time uh, will, will accomplish that. Um, anything else we need, we need inside this in this while loop? How does it total plus Yeah, we need we need our total plus equals i equivalent. We're summing up our our number zero up to ten in in total. Uh, so let's run our program, and it prints out forty five and then sixty six. So uh, these aren't aren't quite uh, the same. We we want to see 45 uh, uh, each time. So please discuss with your neighbors uh, what we might need to change about my while loop version to get it to uh, match the same uh, step, same output as our as our for loop version. Anyone have a, a suggestion for how I might I might uh, change up my my while loop version? Uh, yeah. Emma. Yeah. So I'm gonna suggest say less than ten, as it turns out our our range fun range function goes up to but does not include. Uh, our stopping point, uh, and then uh, why? By the way, if I hold the uh, Alt or Option key and use the up and down arrows, I can reorder lines in VS Code. So uh, it's in the it's in the selection move line up, move line down menu, which it's showing me is is Option arrow key. So we. We frolicking line. Anyway, we wanted to move it below. Uh, why? Uh, why did we need to move count plus equals one? Why did we need to switch those two lines? Sam. Because what you were telling it to do before is count it before. So essentially, once you got to ten, you would get to eleven, and then it would pretty much count that eleven to negate that. We wanted to go afterwards. So it, once it gets to ten, it stops at ten, and it only counts it to ten. Exactly. If we add one before we add count on to total, we're, add, we're always adding like one more than, than we mean to. Um, yeah. Uh, questions on, on this, uh, this loop translation? What, what do you got for me? So, uh, is there a shortcut to, like, I know there's a shortcut to indent everything. Is there a shortcut to like, take it out to guard it? Uh, so. Uh, again, in our selection menu, so command uh, close square bracket indents, command or, or control if on, on Windows, open square bracket unindents. And this will be applied to any lines you have selected. Other questions? <coughs> yeah. Is there a shortcut to uncomment multiple lines? Uh, Will asks, is there a shortcut to comment, uncomment? So if I have some lines selected, there is selection. Um, uh, so there's toggle line comment, which is telling me is uh, on Mac command slash or control slash on Windows. That will just comment out all lines you have selected or uncomment them if they're already commented. This is a nice way to uh, quickly comment out or, or uncomment uh, a bunch of lines.
All right, that is actually pretty much everything we need to know about while loops. We know how Boolean conditions work. We know about loops repeating code, and more often we're going to want we're going to be using a for loop to go through a list or uh, some sequence of of numbers using range. But sometimes we we'll want a while loop, uh, especially when there's uh, some sort of interactive input, like in our guessing game, that we want to just kind of keep the game going until some condition is met, or keep asking for input until uh, we get what we're looking for. So we have a bit of time left, and you know me, I have more practice. So not while loops, but uh, let's uh, take a look at this list mystery practicing our, our list indexing. So uh, take a minute and, and try and work out what, uh, what this will print out at the end. All right. Uh, work with your, your neighbors to maybe fill out, fill out a chart where right after each line what V is going to be, and, and you might also put I on there as, as well. All right, we have uh, successfully uh, moved toward our, our correct answer. That we're going to have one, five, six, uh, four, six, nine. Uh, and we can kind of go through our, our chart, keeping track of what V is at each after each step, and a reminder that we have our, our negative indexes, minus one is the last element, minus two is the, the second to last, um, and uh, uh, go, go from there. Uh, questions on, on this or, or lines of code up there that would be helpful for me to go over? All right, well, not enough time for another practice problem, so uh, we'll end here, keep working on the lab. Uh, I have office hours tomorrow evening. There's the quiz due 9 p.m. tonight, and I'll see you Wednesday.